Good evening, everyone. I am Alex Joseph. Oof. I'm the managing editor of FIT's amazing magazine, Hugh. Has anyone seen that? Yes, thank you. Uh, now, is anyone here Canadian? Yes? A few? Two? Three? Okay, so don't answer this question uh, because you're going to give away the secret. Just can anyone who's not Canadian tell me what special day it is today in Canada? Yes, just shout it out. It's Canadian Thanksgiving. And I bet most of you did not know that. 5% of FIT's international students currently hail from Canada. And Canada often is among FIT's top countries of origin. Uh, Canada is the theme of this evening because this event was sponsored by FIT's Office of International Student Services with help from FIT's Cultural Fellows Program. And this evening we will be snacking on goodies sponsored by the college's Office of Alumni Engagement and Giving. So from the country that brought you Justin Bieber, Justin Trudeau, Celine Dion, anybody remember Celine Dion? Yeah, okay, good. Ryan Gosling, how about that? Drake, right? Margaret Atwood, who's watching The Handmaid's Tale? A very timely story, you should all be watching that. But get your bonnets ready for that moment when it's about to happen. Come two of FAT's most fabulous alumni. Kaylee and Samantha Beckerman. And I wrote this really long speech where I explained who they were and what they did and how they got their start and all this stuff. And I thought, nah, I'm just going to do this instead. Thanks for
for all being here today. Yay, it's Woo! so awesome to be back. Wow, we. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving. Yes. I'm Sam. Kaylee. Sam in the pink. <laughs> I was, that was going to be my first question. Which one is which? I'm glad we got that straightened out. So here's what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of the uh, Oprah chit-chat, Ellen DeGeneres kind of chit-chat. Don't make me cry. I won't. I please, prom I, please. Well, I won't. I, I promise. <laughs> Um, and then um, the twins have promised us that they'll, sh they'll walk us through how they make an actual image, an actual piece of content, right? Yep, sure. Like yep, how to do an Instagram picture that they do. And then um, we will open it up for questions from the audience. Uh, you can ask any question. Well, I guess any, I guess any. Anything, anything you like. Anything you, you like. Want. We will try to answer uh, you in the <laughs> best way possible. And then we will... Uh, Break down, and people can take as many selfies as they as they want, as long as they're polite. Yeah, whatever you like. Right. Hell, yeah. we're okay. good. Okay. <laughs> we're easy. So, um, so the twins just got in from Paris. Maybe we should talk about Paris. That's an awful lot of Karl Lagerfeld there. I just want to point this out. <laughs> there are many Karl Lagerfelds in that closet with them. So, tell me, what were you doing in Paris? So we were there for Paris Fashion Week, and Karl Lagerfeld had a breakfast um, for the different ambassadors, and we're the Canadian ambassadors, so we're like, oh my god, we're in town, we're coming. They were launching their shoe collection, mm. so we had a look at their new uh, shoes, and then they just launched a Vans collection, which is so cool. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we basically meet up with the team every time we go to Paris, just mm. to keep in touch and to see how they're doing, and it's actually where Karl works and um, draws and does and creates all of the collections. So it's yeah, a really like his special place office to go. Is just upstairs. It's pretty fabulous. Like with his sketchbook and his pencil crayons and his art, and it's just it's, it's he pretty magical. He always seems kind of terrifying. Is he? No. No. He's a really nice yeah, he's guy. He's awesome. Oh. When so we first when we first met him, um, we showed him we dress up our dog as Carl Lager Wolf. We actually made the hashtag up, and they, they loved it so much, we started dressing up Marnie like Carl Lagerwolf, and we showed him, and he's yeah. like, he actually took off his glasses, and he goes, he's like, now that <laughs> is cute. <laughs> it was awesome. So that was yeah. really cool. It was a moment. Yeah. And you did this picture in your suite, I assume? So, so that, this was actually a boomerang, because they had all these Carl balloons right. in the closet, so um, Sam had this great idea that we were going to hide in the closet it's and then open Kelly and songs. close them. <laughs> yeah. And I was just hoping the door the doors are so French and antique, I was hoping that they, we weren't going to get stuck in there with all those balloons. <laughs> it's a little scary, but uh, it was great. I think this is like the capture of the boomerang. It's like that. Yeah. I, you know, the thing is like uh, uh, Instagram and Google, Instagram wouldn't let me drag videos or gifts into... It's okay, reason. that's kind of my best angle anyways, though. It's a it looks screenshot. good. Yeah. It's really, but it's like you're running in terror from, from yeah. Carl. Yeah. So um, did you get to do anything else cool while you were in Paris? Yeah, we, uh, we saw the Chanel show, and it was so awesome because they created the whole Grand Palais, like a waterfall, and they had the models walking on a, like a boardwalk. Mm -hmm. So it was truly sensational. It was just one of those experiences where the water first starts dripping, and then it's gushing, and it's like mind, all the models are walking blowing. faster, and yeah. the music picks up, and it was all the models wearing um, see-through plastic outfits. Right, right. So it was all sort of like a plastic, fantastic um, rain theme. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And then we went to the Off-White off show. It's Virgil Abloh's show, which right. was incredible. It was, it was like, such a sick show. He so made good. the whole room smoke. So it was actually everything was foggy. <laughs> like to get a photo, we were That's... like, ah, like yeah. And he had like birds chirping in the background, and that was it was Naomi Campbell leading the way. It was ooh, Naomi, really awesome. Yeah. What she were the very clothes? Chaotic. What were the clothes like? Um, sort of ballerina inspired, mm -hmm. very like very fluffy almost with um, chiffon fluff sort of, but mixed in with ballerina corsets. Yeah, and very street. Yeah. And he's yeah. very like off white too with his belts and the high waisted baggy pants and when you cool. now when you go to a show like that, do you do you when possible wear the designer that you're 
visiting? Yes. It? Okay. Yeah, so we'll mix it in. We sort of do like, we like mixing it in. Sometimes we just do total head to toe just because it's so much fun. Yeah, it really depends. Yeah. You seem to have a look of your own. How would you describe that? <laughs> It's very well. stand up. Show them the the unicorn. That's really great. Come on. This is a. Uh, is that J Jeremy Scott? <laughs> yeah, for Mosquito. Okay. Yeah, the My Little Pony collection. We actually made up a little My Little Pony dance, which should be illegal. Oh, no, it's on Instagram on. stories. You can't it's mention it and kind of losing it. it. <laughs> but we have kind of always had our own style and our own kind of vibe. This is our friend um, Haruno from Japan, and he kind of creates like one of a kind. What's so cool is we found him on Instagram. So you can really like meet a lot of cool people through Instagram, hmm. which is really awesome. Well, we are just going to get, get back into Instagram and the yes. influence of social media and so and forth. We actually just met Haruno for the first time this fashion week. We've been Instagram friends for five years and That's he doesn't right. speak any English. And oh. so we were sort of just like, we were just charading and mimulating. It. It's like a, yeah. a love connection. And yeah. it, it was really nice to finally Aww. meet him for his so biggest sweet. fans. Aww. Yeah. Um, okay, so just for a second, let's uh, let's find out how you got here. And I put this picture in because that's you, Chloe. Uh, that's our sister, Chloe. Is Chloe is their sister. Yes. Um, so tell me, now you, you grew up in, did you grow up in Toronto? Yes. In Canada. And um, now there's this rumor that you did not have television <laughs> growing true. up. How did you survive? We grew up, um, so our parents are kind of like hippie yoga People, yeah, they're, they're awesome. The hippie yoga love people. You probably see our mom all the time in our Instagram photos. You heard it here. Into fashion. Into fashion, yeah. People into fashion. Hippie yoga yeah. people. That's a paradox. And vegan and vegetarian. Yeah. And so at one point our parents, I think my mom read like a newspaper article and she was like, you know what? We're, we're going to stop watching TV. And we were like, oh my God, you're killing me. Sam and I were so great at Nintendo. and like, So great. We really were we always watching Genie. TV. And, yeah. But we started... It's funny because we actually started scrapbooking and drawing and we had like all these sewing machines in our parents' basement and I would sit down there for hours and I would just create and design and scrapbook and we actually brought our scrapbook and met Stella McCartney when we were 16 at Holt Renfrew, that's our department store there, and we showed her the scrapbook and she signed it. And she actually became our pen pal. And I remember she, at, when we were in Nagler Hall here at FIT, she was sending us packages to our dorm. Wow. It was when she was still working for Chloe. For Chloe. I don't know if you guys I remember. remember telling Vasilia <laughs> and yeah. Sarah, who are my professors. Like, Stella just sent us a video. It's the horse collection. Maybe we should watch it and share it with the class. Maybe we should, yeah. <laughs> And did you? Yeah. Oh. yeah. It was on Boobs like VHS. Were everywhere. VHS. VHS. I think they rented the TV. <laughs> really? Sold it into the classroom. Yeah. It was so awesome. those of you who haven't concluded into this yet, because I already said it, they're both FIT grads. Yes. Yes. So, yes thank you. Now, uh, I have that Kaylee graduated magna cum laude from fashion design. Is that right? Thanks. That's right. And I majored in knitwear. You majored in knitwear, and yeah. Sam, is it Sam or Samantha, which is Sam's it? Sam's great. Sam's great. So Sam graduated summa cum laude and received the departmental award Ooh. in accessories design. <laughs> Smart people are just like so much sexier than dumb people, don't you think? Oh, yeah. thanks. Don't you agree? Thanks. They are. But so tell me, like, was there anything that you felt like you learned when you were here that became useful to you in this latest incarnation that you have? So we had a real journey, actually. We were fashion designers right after, right actually, as we left school, we decided to become fashion designers. So the school really taught us through that journey, I guess, to always be on time, a lot of hard work. You can't skip classes. You have to <laughs> really dedicate yourself. Um, and we were totally immersed in I mean I used to I mean I was in fashion design I used to like sleep at the school I don't even think they let you do that anymore like in the pattern making <laughs> class know. like just like oh my god you know with all of our friends and we were just trying to get the work done and I guess it taught us to have a really good work ethic yes you know and just to like hustle too because I remember I had this great professor professor Bess and he was a great pattern making teacher and he said to me something I remember it was my first day of school and he was like if any of you ever become designers and you ever get into a department store you know when your clothes are hanging there 
go there on lunch break and make sure none of the clothes are sitting on the floor. And if they're sitting behind another person, like another designer, just, you know, pick them up and move them to the front, you know? And I was like, Very oh smart. my God, first day of school, like, let's do this, you know? Like, I would say like FIT gave us like the, the feeling and the empowerment just that we can really do it and we mm -hmm. can make it. The so confidence. let's do it. The confidence. Because yeah. when I went into my program, Accessories Design, I got the BFA. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know how to make shoes or how to make handbags. And I was making, I was like a little cobbler and making handbags and belts and mm -hmm. anything you could name I could make. It was mm -hmm. unbelievable the skills I learned and actually the process of how things are made because um, we actually had a handbag line and we'd go to the factory and know exactly what they were doing or what was wrong with the bag or what wasn't working. And also, I just want to say that the accessories professors, like, they're here, but, like, they're, <laughs> they're amazing. They're, they're me. amazing. They're... And so are the fashion ones, too, but, like, yes. the accessories ones, like, we love you guys. We love you guys. Thanks for all your support. I mean, I even hung out in the accessories <laughs> department so much because I was always hanging out with Sam. So and like... they actually allowed me to do my thesis with Kaylee. Which was incredible. So, so that's an interesting question. Like, why, you know, you're sisters, uh, but you like each other. We do. Yes. <laughs> How Actually, did that happen? When we enrolled here to FIT, Kaylee was like, I do not want to live with you. No, I do I not want to live with you. And I was like, I get it. No, I, but you know, you meet. sign all the paperwork and they're like, where do you want to live? And blah, blah, blah. And who do you want to live with? And I wrote, definitely not Samantha Beckerman. <gasps> like, highlighted it. Just yeah. And I was like, okay, get it. You want to make new friends. Okay, That's it. I wanted That's to make fine. new friends and whatever, whatever. We got here and my roommate was Samantha Beckerman. <laughs> and I was and like... We were at Nagler Hall and we looked at the room and we were like... I was like, okay, FIT knows best. We're good. We're good together. We're good. So it worked out. It worked out. We're good. If we were roommates, we should be roommates. Yeah, I, I mean, know. you've really had a long career of working together with your sister mm -hmm. as well, right? And yeah, so Chloe went to FIT also oh. and yes. majored in textile design. Oh, so okay. Yeah. We became fashion designers. We did a thesis together, and then it actually um, was featured in Nylon Magazine, and Kaylee put her phone number in the magazine. <laughs> and one day we got a phone call from Loveless Department Store. It's a department store in Tokyo, very luxurious. And mm -hmm. they were like, hi, we're coming in to New York. We'd love to see your collection that Omira was wearing. She's the supermodel at the time. Mm -hmm. oh. And we were like, uh, OK, sounds great. They're like, is it for sale? I was like, we can make it yes, for sale, definitely. sure. <laughs> I remember we sized it. I was like, I don't even know like, how to figure this out, but we figured it out. We just basically like, stayed indoors for like six months and rented we made the conference the room in our yeah. apartment. Wow. Rented mannequins. I sold all the handbags that I made for my thesis collection. Oh. You sold the showpiece that you made it for was fashion for a, design. Like a Japanese pop star. Japanese pop star wore it. Oh my gosh. And awesome. so it was called The Birthday Girl. It was really special. A knitwear with cupcakes mm. all over it. It was a knitwear with cupcakes on it. What, mixed with leather. I see Woven a through, leather. I'm seeing a through line. <laughs> oh my God. We, we have to bring work. up some pictures but eventually. How, you know, you. this is something I think the students would like to know. Like, how did you get into nylon? Like, how did you sort of get noticed? What was the. So we won. Oh, I know. We called them up. Yeah. You called them up. We cold yeah. called everyone. First Takes of an all. In, taking initiative. <laughs> Yeah, we called them up and we said, we have a collection we'd like to show you. Oh. Yeah, And at the time, funny enough, I think it was this woman named Nancy, and she was a Canadian. She was. Oh, Canadian is another so, through line. Yeah. Remember, it's kind of Canadian like, oh my God, is the theme. <laughs> yeah. It's the theme. It's actually a funny story. You're Canadian, I'm Canadian, come on in, girls. <laughs> I think everything Canadians is better are very in nice. Canada. Everything's better in Canada. Why are we not living there? Oh, because we're in New York. Um, Our prime minister is very good looking. They're saying. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we went, we went in. We, she featured us. You're right. Yeah. She featured us. As like a new hot designer, and designer, up and coming knitwear designer. And yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we had our clothing line for five years called right. Beckerman in New York. It was called Beckerman. It was yes. here in New York. And tell me about that. So did you, oh, I was going to ask you this actually, when you were here, uh, there was an internet. So did you have anything to do with it? Were you even curious about it? Were you, did you have a blog or anything? Times were really different. Like yeah. I remember when we would get, when some of the celebrities, I remember Paris Hilton was wearing our bag and Lindsay Lohan. The only way for us to really know if they wore it is like Wire Image or Getty. And right. Google. Searching Google and Google search. That Just for it. like party images or right. pictures of them. It was like there was no really mm -hmm. source, direct source for us to really know like there is yeah. now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, you 
Okay, so, uh, but you weren't doing, you weren't blogging, you weren't uh, doing anything else, so. Um, so we were making clothes. But you were making clothes, so tell me about well, the Well, the interesting line. thing is that I feel like when we were designing, like, there was a, a shift starting to happen in terms of, like, social media and all that, because we were, you know, shooting our own lookbook because we had this vision, and also, um, we, we really wanted to make a video of our lookbook. And there are these like hipster guys from Brooklyn we met at a party and they were like, girls, we want to make you a video, but it's going to cost you $10,000 for one minute of real film. And we were like, what? That's ridiculous, like totally ridiculous. We don't also, we don't need real film. And so we bought our own video camera and we were like, we can figure this out. And so we made our own video and we uploaded it it was like of our supermodel friend at the time, who was so Agnes nice. Dean, who Agnes we met at a concert. Yeah. Who, what was her name? Agnes Dean. Agnes Dean. Aggie. Yeah, Aggie. Aggie. We met her in a concert line, then we met her at a flea market, and then and we, we just then we saw her again at another flea market. Seeing someone everywhere, and you just become friends. It was like so. The, the tip <laughs> is just have magical things happen to you in New York. It was if fun. you go to flea markets enough, you start realizing yeah. there's certain people there who are like, who are just like you, who like. Vintage yeah. just yeah. as much as you do that you should probably be friends. There's something yes. about that. Like we were friends yeah. with all the vendors, <laughs> we'd go there every weekend. But we uploaded this video we made to YouTube. I think it was like maybe one of the first years that YouTube was out and it had like 90,000 views on what? it and we were like, what is going was on? Was it like, tagged or something? Why would it? No, why did it, no I don't know. It just, just, it went viral and I think like for us that was kind of the first time that we yeah. actually were like, what is this social media thing and, Interesting. you know, kind of feeling like something was changing. This is pr way pre-Facebook, right? People yeah. were always asking us what we were wearing. I think wearing. this was the first year that Facebook, I think, well, the first year I got on, I think, was 2008. So it was mm -hmm. kind of around then. Yeah. 2000, yeah. To stock ex-boyfriends. <laughs> sort of. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> that too. Okay. <laughs> Why don't we, um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to show um, some images and maybe we can start talking about the kind of work that you're doing in, on Instagram and we can describe some of the yeah. projects. So I love this. This is Jeremy Thanks. Scott, right? Yeah. So tell, tell us about how that relationship, uh, is, uh, how did this come about? How did this picture get made? What was the story? So we've been, we love Jeremy. We've been friends with him. We've been wearing his stuff for maybe... I don't know, maybe 15 years? And First, for Fashion Week, I remember we used to sneak into his shows because yep. we didn't even have tickets or didn't know, so we just kind of snuck in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is highly illegal. Oh, Which is very hard to do when there's two of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're, and you're <laughs> twins. <laughs> That's not we got the idea that they it's are twins <laughs> and that this, this yeah, ineffable so charm. We yeah. finally met him like two and a half, three years ago, and it was, yeah. it was like we, he had known us already our whole, it, it felt like we were just instant friends. He's the nicest person on the planet. He's mm -hmm. kind and he's, he's so talented and he's like family to us now. So this was actually his 20th anniversary. Oh. And at, we celebrated at New York Fashion Week just a few weeks or last month. Yeah. What month is it? Yeah. Last month. And this is, we're wearing pieces from his um, vintage collection from like 2007. So we're wearing archive collection pieces and we wore them as dresses. And They're, it was, this was backstage at his show. Mm -hmm. Those are amazing uh, textile <laughs> prints. I just have to say that. They're fabulous. Uh, they're yeah. amazing. And did you, um, and I noticed the boots are Moschino as well, and the yep, lunch yes. boxes? And the, the lunch hats, boxes hats are Jeremy. Are Everything. And the hats are Moschino. Yeah. The hat, the whole yeah. look. Yeah. So we always try to coordinate, you know, to yeah. try to make it go together. The but then we also you. kind of come up with our own theme, like it's like this, a cowboy funk. This is kind of like our own theme. It's like he went to the rodeo really and then maybe it. went to Vegas that night. Yeah, like you can't really explain it, but because there's two of us and it you're works. eating candy. It's like you know disco mean? rodeo twins. I can see that yes. as a, yes. that's a tag. With like, a bonbon. With, with what? With a bonbon. Bonbon. It's candy in oh, French. Yes. Right. It's just like a little, I see. a little sweetness. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, this I think, was this, uh, this was a magazine, was it Flaunt? Was that Flair. Over? Flair, sorry. Flair. Yeah, Flair. This is Flair. So, um, how did this work out? What was the story? So, Sam and I worked with um, Flair magazine for a year, and basically, um, we would um, wear different designers every month, and kind of interpret it the way we 
you know, wanted to show it. Mm -hmm. So this is Marcus Almeida. And we actually became friends with Marcus Almeida. They graduated from uh, Central St. Martin. So we have some of their first collection. We have their thesis collection. We actually have their, the we, we bought it, their thesis collection, because <laughs> we were obsessed. We saw them in a magazine and, And yeah. we kind of lost our mind over their stuff. And then they ended up becoming huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I so remember. So you're doing great. So how do you get followers and get, is it just like- On, on Instagram yeah, or just in general? No, I mean, on social media in general. Like how do you, I mean, I know what you're, there's what you're doing, just the fact that you're twins and you're ha having a great time and the images are amazing. Like, but aside from that, like, are you, like, is there a way to get more followers on, on these social media sites, do you think? A tr not, I don't mean a trick, because that yeah. seems like it's like a gimmick, but a strategy, how's that? For us, I feel like it's being as real as we can with people. Yeah. Like, for us, I mean, and it's different for other bloggers, but um, we like when things are just like, they don't have to be perfect. It can be in the moment. You, you sort of have your own vision and your own way of doing things, and people are following you because they connect with you, mm -hmm. and they like you, and... Like, all your um, pictures don't have to have one filter. Right. Like, we're very, we're not like that. We're kind of, I like, we like when things are real. I like when things tell a story. It's really hard to say, you know, how to, get more followers. I think everyone keeps, everyone's trying to figure that out really. Like, you know, <laughs> how do you grow and how do you get more people? And, and I think that, well, just from what we've been experiencing, people really love before and afters. <laughs> they love looking at beauty videos like before and after, you know, like, or food photos, you know, like the ingredients and here it is done. You, people love to see stuff like that. Or like, you know, if you're, um, you know, making a dress in fashion design and you show your sketch and then maybe you show like, do a little video of, show the progression of working on it and sewing and then showing the end, you know, the end result. So it's not like just like a picture. We find that people are a lot more responsive to videos, yeah. you know, so maybe it's showing um, the progression of the start of what you're working on and then, you know, continued until the end result. So it's not just a picture of like, here's my dress I've been working on for the last six months. It's like, here's what I've been working on and you take them on this journey and it's interesting that you know a picture a picture says a lot but a video you feel like you're with someone and you feel like you're really experiencing that adventure with them yes. so i guess you know i don't know if, i don't really know the secret but i think that if you take people on that journey with you it's a really great way to get more followers mm -hmm. because they feel like they know you and they feel like they're with you mm -hmm. i would just like to add that what you're seeing with the Beckermans, as far as I can tell, is really who they are. Like, you guys are just this way, like, in a good mood, or seem to be in a good mood, and, like, relax and, like, fun to talk to. Like, Aww. that's, like, Thanks. like Thanks. I mean, I think that's great. I think that's, like, it's, that's not a secret because it's not something you can emulate, really. You either sort of can feel that way or not, I think. Um, but is it, is it something you are conscious of? I mean, you're sisters, so you've been doing this for quite some time. Like, this kind of energy that you have? Is it something you... I think so. We kind of have this motto that, like, I never get tired. <laughs> kind of say that when we're, like, dragging suitcases through the airport, you know. Oh. What's that rap song? I work six jobs, I don't get tired. <laughs> yeah, like, you know. <laughs> just, we're just enjoying we ourselves. Have, like, try to always have a good, out, you know, outlook to life and just... You know, we're doing our thing. We're actually doing what we love, so it yes. makes it really enjoyable. Yes. That's also good, if yeah. you can be doing really that. really good. Uh, Let's see if this stuff. Oh. Oh. Twix. <laughs> oh, this was Twix. a really fun campaign. So tell me, tell us about this. Like, I, the students will try want to understand as much as you're comfortable talking about it, the business model of the work. So, and clearly this is something that you worked out with Twix. So how did, how did, so roughly how does that come about? And what's so it like? Kaylee and I love to eat chocolate. I love candy. We love candy. I, love, I mean, love who doesn't candy. love candy? <laughs> We're very body positive. Good question. We just, we yeah. love eating junk food. It's one of our <laughs> things we do. Anyways, um, they approached us and they were like, and they were saying they're doing this campaign and it's all about what side do you eat first, the left side or the right side? And I was like, duh, that's so clear. I'm always the left. Kaylee's always, always the right. Always, always the You're right. probably like that in the womb. Really? Why? Probably. Why is Probably. <laughs> and I don't know why. But, and they why. say it's like a left brain, right brain thing. Oh. So, but it's sort of a known for us. 
Yeah. Like when we get into, um, like when we take pictures, it's usually that way. Yeah. Um, does, one, does one person do more of the picture setting up? One person do more of the clicking of the shutter or no? It's just 50, no? Well, well okay, Sam's sometimes. two inches taller. Oh. So she has the longer arm for the selfie. Oh, That's true. Gotcha. True story. That's true. So Not I mean, much longer, but this maybe is a, a little. Secret. This is this is. I'm great. the bigger half of the egg. So <laughs> I got a little she, on her. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, um, so so this was a really me. interesting collaboration. Yeah. So um, yeah, they approached us and they're like, um, who's the left, who's the right? And I was like, well, I always eat the left side first of the Twix, and Kaylee's like, I always eat the right. the right. So the campaign really made sense to us. It felt right to do, and mm. um, <laughs> I had pink so hair. So did they, did they just hand you the Twix and say, just put it in your feet, or did they want it a certain way? They, no, they, they no. sent us like probably 50 Twixes, <gasps> And we, I would say trouble. we oh. ate them all. Like, I think we first were like, oh, we should give some away. And then they maybe sit in your cupboard. I was like, maybe we should freeze them. And then eventually, it's just like, just they finally they're so good. They're so good. Oh. Even our sister Chloe was pregnant at the and time. And people were writing comments on our photo, like, I'm running out to get a Twix right now because they're so you good. just made me crave <laughs> Twix. So and that's what happens. Probably all of you will go get a Twix because once you stare at it long enough, that's all you want. I'm going did to look away. Question? Yes, I think you did. Uh, if, if you didn't, the students will have time to do that in a moment. Um, okay. Um, okay, this was for H&M, right? Yeah. Yeah. What was this? this so, their, you go ahead. Yeah, so H&M does like a designer. Um, well, it's like they're, every February they studio. have their studio collection, that's right. So we went to Paris with them, and this was right before the show, and uh, yeah. This was like their red carpet. Is that, is that all, now? Is but they it, made it kind of naked looking, sort of that look, or sort of yeah, like. Yeah, and we're, we're wearing all H&M. Yeah. Elemental. And you guys are wearing their stuff. Yes. yes. And that bag. HTC. Now, but you guys still make your own, some of your own accessories and uh, design, like clothing, is that true? So we make a lot of like DIY stuff. Mm -hmm. So we'll make like patchwork shorts or jackets mm -hmm. or embellish things or paint on things. For H&M actually, we've done a lot of do-it-yourself oh, cool. for their music festivals and safety mm -hmm. pins all over things. And we go to Oceaga, their music festival, every summer it's the best. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So we work a lot with H&M. Okay. Yeah. They were actually, H&M was, um, gave us our first gig. Yeah. Like our first legit gig ever when we first started blogging. Oh, so they were like, oh. They were our first collaborators oh. that believed in us. And they're like, oh, girls, we love what you're doing. Let's get you on board. And it was so cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, oh, this was Coach. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, we're Coach Ambassadors. So it's, you're the Coach Ambassador. So like, yeah. what does that mean? So it means we work with the company, um, we'll go to their fashion shows. They did, um, last year they did a Disney collaboration. Mm. Yes. So we love Disneyland we, and we're Disney also, World. Like, we're Disney ambassadors too. We do Disney too. stuff, we just go crazy there. I we just go love crazy. Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and yeah, we go, yeah, we go a little too crazy. We have to like, yeah. They, yeah, we are the people they shouldn't let in. <laughs> do, you, do you, now which is better, Disney World or Disneyland? Um, well, I kind of like Disneyland. Okay. Well, it's smaller because it's smaller. Okay. And it's near our More sister. More doable. Oh, right. You can see Chloe. So I don't know if that counts. That counts. Okay. It counts okay. to me. <laughs> um. Ooh. Oh, this is, is this Jeremy Scott again? This no, is so, Kenzo. Oh, no, this for is Kenzo. H &M. Right. Oh, yeah, this right. was actually the Kenzo for H&M. So it was so cool because for that collaboration, the designer collaboration, um, we did a collab with H&M, and so we had kind of seen what they were gonna like do for Kenzo, and so we had to figure out what we wanted to do, like to take to do our take on it and where all the uh, all the pieces. So this is what we did, and it was all top secret at the time, so no one had seen the clothes. So they let us come into the showroom, mix match it. Um, they said we could wear whatever we wanted, put anything together. So this is how we styled it, our take on it. I remember we were wearing the menswear, we were wearing the women's, we put, mm -hmm. and, and we worked with the eyes our, on our head. We worked with one of our like favorite photographers who like oh, okay. lets us just do whatever we want. So that's, you know, it's really about who you work with too. Were the it's pictures, true. now these pictures appeared on your blog. Yes, but, our blog and Instagram. Oh, it was on Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. So, but did you, did they then appear in print or did they appear elsewhere? Nope. Do you know? Just oh. as on, for us, yeah. I think it, I think it 
was featured in the British Times. Oh yeah, it was. It was. Yes. Yeah, the UK Times. UK yeah. Times. Yeah. Oh. The London Times. London that's Times. It. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, it's like oh, the UK those. Times. The London, London Times. Times. They featured it. Um, but I love when we get to creatively and artistically work with crews and photographers that we who we love and who make us feel comfortable and they're like, mm -hmm. girls, do whatever you want, go crazy. They put on like gangster rap music and we just go crazy. And I think And then the next day you kinda of feel it in your back a little you're like, I don't know. Oh, I went that. a little too hard. I or I'm not that. as flexible as I was in high heels is not that easy. <laughs> but I think it's so important working with like people who make you feel really good. Because mm -hmm. we've yeah. done a lot of different work with like photographers over the years and just different energies and it's all mm -hmm. about really Well it's interesting with photographers because we're technically photographers too. Right, yeah. You know, so some photographers are like, oh, it has to be my vision, it has to look like this. And then there's other photographers who are like, well, let, what do you girls want? You know, I want you to be happy and that is that collaborative, I think, is when the pictures turn out the best. Yeah. When or, you're working together. Oh. Or, when yeah. the, or someone else who's like, you know what, I want to do something totally new, something that no one's ever seen before. Yeah. How do you feel about this? And you're like, oh wow, that was a okay. great build up. Yes. I don't know what you're talking about, but yes. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Uh, this is Tiffany. Yeah, yeah, Tiffany, they launched their new rock and it was like a rock and roll collection it in was Toronto. It the Lady, Lady Gaga um, collection. Club. So, so they, yeah, so we did something for Toronto, for Canada to launch it. Okay, yeah. so you put, like, were stressed and we were yeah. dressed in so, there was, yeah, the jewelry was just like amazing. Dynamite. They yeah. told us we could layer whoever we wanted. Mm. I think we were wearing so much jewelry that Yeah. Day. I think we took it off for this photo, it was for the party. They oh, were, yeah. yeah. We yeah. had to like tone it down for the party because we were like in so think much close stuff. Close to a million we had on us. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then we took an Uber and I was like, this is a little like, is, we should, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah. And in a situation like this, your, your, your fashion is your own, or your own idea, yes. whatever it is. Yes, yeah. that's how we styled ourselves. And, these, and again, just to point out, the, the two outfits are sort of in conversation with one another, is that right? Like it, Actually, they, they specifically asked that we wear all black. Oh. Okay. So, the so that the jewelry out. really stands out. So oh. yeah. we were like, that's easy enough to do. Oh. Yeah. I mean, kind of hard, but, you know, easy. Hard and easy. <laughs> You all, this is the trick. You always look like you're having an amazing time. This oh my is, god! Oh my okay. god! This, this is Chanel. Okay, this was so funny. So we had this idea. You know the you know the vintage pictures of Marilyn Monroe oh, on the yeah. beach in the Hamptons. In the, yeah, she's like in the. She looks so great. So Sam and I had this idea <laughs> that we were gonna wear these jackets with like nothing really underneath. We were also with our friend photographer who likes you know us to try things. And it was negative 22 degrees Celsius that day. And there was so much wind. It was insane. Like you would never know when this photo. So Sam and I, we self tanned the night before, like so much self tanner. And then the, and then we did this and we were totally frostbitten after. Oh. Like for three days after we had like she had body to... rashes. Uh, red body rashes. That's how windy and, and it was so weird. I was on. This I think a, uh, we took like a flight to LA the next day, and I was like scratching my like, leg. It gets itchy. And then I was like, "What?" And everything was just scaly, frost bitten, oh, no. ugly. Oh. With with self tanner, it was like parents insane. saying to us, "Girls, whose idea was that?" I was like, "Why um, would you do that? It's so stupid. Like, <laughs> why Why would you do it?" I mean, like, it looks great, but in it's the middle silly. of and winter. they were sitting there in their yoga pants, <laughs> yeah. gnawing on like a you know. A, <laughs> Yeah. Parrot, you know, an organic yeah. parrot. <laughs> but you know what? There's a time frame for all this because this was like their newest collection yeah. and it had to and get out. You're right. And uh, no one had seen it. And we said we really want to be the first people to wear it. Got it. And our friend Jacqueline was into it. So we just she had to like Photoshop our red noses out because we oh. were totally just like freezing. Jacqueline is a photographer. Yes. She's the, oh. Yeah. She's the one who shot the Kenzo as well. Ah. Yeah. Uh, and there's, I think there's another one from that series in here. Yeah, yes. I just love yes. this yes. series. So it was really winter really time. Fun. And my jacket was plastic and it froze like this. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, ah. it wasn't supposed to go out that much. It just froze. Oh. It's, it's very like hard. It was like an icicle. Ace but you would Ace never know that. You never know. No. 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 You never <laughs> know. Like, they're like, oh. Oh, I couldn't get the video to play. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. uh, there's this wonderful, you, you guys made this really sort of beautiful moment with this Chanel um, product. Oh, their hand cream. Thanks. So how did this, like, how does that work? Do they just, again, like, do they give you the product and say, 
do whatever you want with it, or do you, you know, do you have to submit it and let them approve of it? I, I, you don't have to answer this question if it's tricky. No, no, okay. no, that's easy. That's okay. a great question. So, no. cause so they, they, cause if they you look trust on their us. Blog, if, they look, if you look on their <laughs> blog, they'll be, they'll be, you know, wearing or putting on makeup or a product or something. And I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. What were you going to say? No. So with Chanel, they trust. They they know what we do. They, they we've worked with them for maybe. Five six, five, six years now, so they really like what we do. And this was a new hand cream they got that looks like a little egg, it's sort of squishy like right, that. Right. So we thought, you know, with the hand towels, let's kind of do some hand modeling. Let's see if we can actually make this work because our nails don't look that great, but let's see if we can make these towels look luxurious. And mm -hmm. so it's sort of coming up, up with new ideas mm -hmm. and sort of, um, like sort of just challenging was, ourselves. It was like a simple one. It was just like, oh, let's walk into the bathroom, just like, you know, like you're going to use it and like, actually use it. Like you were a guest in you someone's know? bathroom and you're like, is that, what's that? A Chanel terry cloth? What? <laughs> what yeah. is that? So it's sort of that experience of opening up what's in here mm -hmm. and what next. But you know, here's the thing. It, I've watched all these many of your videos, but they <laughs> never. You never look like you're working. This is uh, this is the thing. The mystery. That's what our dad said to us a year ago, and we looked at him and we were like, "That's the nicest thing you could have said to us." Because oh. if it looks like we're not working, that means we're doing our we're doing a great job because. Yeah. We we're making it look easy. We're make, if, we make, if we're making it look easy, then that's the nicest thing you could say to me, to <laughs> Kaylee right. and I, because we work and we fly around and we're always working and c trying to come up with ideas and brainstorm and. Mm -hmm. It's a, every day is a creative fun. challenge. I would yeah. think. Yeah, it's not. I, I don't really look at it as a, it like as a challenge, really. But well, sort of I think like, it's like you know taking photos and trying to make them look interesting maybe. and you know not just like a normal photo, like that there's some art in it, you know? We actually, we met Rihanna and we were doing a photo <gasps> and she said to us, in Girls, Paris, this is she's in Paris, by the way. <laughs> she's like, she said to us, I was like, oh my God, let's take a photo, right? Like, I mean, uh, Rihanna, yeah. she's amazing. And she was like, let's make art. And I was like, oh, that is the coolest Yeah, she's thing like, ever. I don't want to just do like a normal picture. Let's so do she, something art. Yeah, so she turned around and I was like, oh my God, Rihanna's face isn't in our photo. <laughs> it's the back no, of her. Is anyone ever going to believe us? And then she like threw up her hands and the tattoos on her hands. It's like, if you know Rihanna, you know those tattoos. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's and art. She was wearing a face mask, like a kitty face mask. Yeah, it's mask. not it just was, like, it doesn't, and the interesting thing is that kind of stuck with us because you know, when you look at, you look at so many images a day and then what makes you really stop and go, oh, that's cool, you know? And it's, it's the photos that you feel something, that have emotion, that aren't just the same things. It's, it sort of dis yeah. disrupts what you're used to seeing. Mm. Like, I don't want to see another ice cream cone. I mean, maybe I'll no be eating an ice cream cones. cone. That's but the first <laughs> lesson in social it's not media. A, it's not a bad thing, but I want to see something that's engaging and that's right. different and that's inspiring. Or and even it doesn't even have to be something that, you know, crazy. It can even be like you, with, with, you with your grandmother, but at least you look at the image and you feel something, you right. know? It's like an emotional, like, oh, that's cute. Not just like, oh, uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so something... It's the yeah. constant. It's sort of an energy, I think. Art, art, fantasy, and I extravaganza. Guess it's, art. it's art. It's art. Now, uh, I did not put a dog picture in here, That's but okay. the dog. But but dogs are a thing, right? Like you, you have. We have Marnie. Marnie and the other dog. Cubby. Cubby. Yeah, Cubby, Cubby passed away in last. Oh. In but, December. In December. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Will there we be have another? Now. What are Marnie. they? Are they Pomeranians? Pomeranians. Okay. The Pomeranians love being dressed up, and they're just a part of our life. And we're always talking to them. And Marnie sits on the carpet and barks at us she and like makes being us dressed do something. up. And we love dressing her up. Oh my God. She actually lives with our parents, so. Um, yeah. Whenever we're back from a trip, my mom will be like, you have to do something with Marnie. She, it's her mojo. Like, go, yeah, like, and like, she sits at the carpet and she's looking at us like, come on, do come something. On, dress do something. something. Yeah. So it's okay. really cute. Like we created a little fashion monster dog. Yeah. So that's the other thing. <laughs> Get a fashion monster dog for your art fantasy. Very demanding. We're always Me. making her outfits. Okay. Um, and there, that's there today. They are today. So this morning. maybe we could um, take a couple of minutes and you could make a pe make a photo and sort of show us like, could you, can For we do sure. that? Let's do it, let's yeah. do it. What are we going to do? Yeah. You guys want to be in our photo? Should we do a photo? Yeah. Okay. yeah. possible to put the house lights on? Yeah, can we do that? Yeah, sure. We can put the All house right. lights on. Right? Okay. All right. Right? 
No, we can't. Oh, All right. Oh, there they are. Like How magic. about that? <laughs> so what are you guys going to do? Well, what should we do? Should we do like a video or a picture or what should we do? You're the art fantasy makers wow. and I'm just your uh, humble I servant. Think we should I think we should first do a video. Okay. Is everyone into that? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So if we're gonna we... film it though. Oh yeah. Do you want me to film it? Sure. Am yeah. I good enough? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like... You're hired. It's gonna be like. You're what? hired. You're hired. You're right. All right. Great. It's gonna be like in uh, go Blow Up, that movie, that French movie. Okay. So I'm what am I doing? Walk. I'm just gonna walk this way. So I think we need like a little bit of like energy. Yeah. Like, like, sitting down. Yeah. And you guys are like the coolest fashionistas at FIT. Like we gotta like show them what we got. We got All right. We're coming down. We're coming. <laughs> so what am what am I doing? All right, is it on? So you don't really need to do yeah. anything. We're okay. gonna cut it later. We're gonna hit start. Okay. All right. So basically, okay, we had an idea that if this side says FIT, and then this side says in the house. <laughs> But we like gotta get up though. We gotta get up. We, yeah, we need like gotta energy. get up. It's gonna be a video of a lifetime. That's right. So we're gonna go. That's why they don't make us VJs. We're gonna go. <laughs> F I T in the house. F I T in the house. They, okay. Yeah. This might be good if I just sort of like pan yeah, across. Yeah. Yeah. Pan. Okay. So do you have it? Do, did you push the button? It's, it's on. on. Oh great. It's yes. See, okay. Yes. I'm gonna That's usually the hardest part. I'm Sometimes we do videos. Later. We don't even push the button. And like we should like jump up and down. Like we let's just do this. All right. Are you ready? Yeah! FIT! In the house! FIT! In the house! FIT! In the house! Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Woo! That was, you guys are awesome. Thanks, everyone. And thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks. It's so much fun. And if anyone has any questions for yeah, us. Yeah, I think we're going to come up for questions. Yes. Now we can have questions. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. All right. Uh, who is going to, how do we do this? The cultural fellows are here to facilitate this part of the... See, and I think that's better than a photo, personally. I mean, I know that's, we could do a photo, way better than, but for that's me... That's better than a photo. Thank that's, you, guys. That's now, is awesome. That, will that actually end up in the, uh, in the Instagram stories or in, on Instagram itself? So we'll do something like that, and then we'll so, take a look, and then we'll be like... That that looked awesome. Yeah, yeah that's an Instagram. If it's awesome, that's like, Instagram. yeah. Okay, so everyone will it look on Instagram. It sort of depends Instagram. sometimes. It kind of depends on the filming. Sort of, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh sometimes gosh. if we've had a few drinks and we're out at night, we're like, oh, that's not. That's, that's more of a story. That's Insta Instagram. Stories. And then if it's not good, you're like, that's a Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, now I know there must be students who have, or even, even faculty, even faculty are like, I want to be successful and glamorous just like these people are. No questions? Was that? Oh, any questions? Oh, oh any someone's questions. got a question over there. Looks like, Hi. Looks like Lynn Hi. Yeager. I loved having Lynn Hi. Yeager in your, in your video, by the way. It is on. Oh, thank Yay. you. Yay! Oh my yeah. god, you have oh, amazing you're style. Oh, it's gorgeous. So I've been following these girls for years um, on Instagram. Um, I, you know me as a Scarlet Bob, I like to stalk you. Yes! Oh my so god! Hi. So this is really exciting for me to have like a real life experience. But my question for you ladies yeah. is, is that I suppose the thing that sets you apart from other fashion bloggers or whatever their people are calling themselves, social media influencers, blah 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 these days, is that you guys are authentically yourselves and you genuinely are having fun with what you're doing, whereas <laughs> You know, the, a lot of other fashion bloggers look like, you know, they need to eat some burgers and just like they have no fun and this is like <laughs> such a hard job. Um, and in an industry that is, I don't know, like reputationally very uh, renowned for like snobbery and people with bad attitudes and all that kind of stuff, how, what has your experience been from being like yourselves? Like, have you experienced that like, oh, they're not like this, or they don't look this way, and whatever. I don't know. Do you understand what I'm trying to ask? Does that even make sense? No, I, I love yeah. that question. Yeah. I think having each other traveling the world and being in fashion, um, there's always ups and downs, and um, we've sort of seen it all, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. We've sort of seen the ugly side, we've seen the awesome side, but then you start realizing when you travel or when you're doing work that there's always people who you connect with 
in the industry. And every time, you know, we go to Paris Fashion Week, we see our friends and you see those people and those are the people you love and you hang out with that make you feel good. And it's just this energy that you're all together and you have the time of your life. So it's almost like all that other stuff, all that, that stuff that's, um, I guess, trying to keep up or trying to, you know, wear the newest thing or trying to be that skinny or trying to, trying to be that perfection or that, that thing that you know you, you won't be or you can't be, it's just not there. It just doesn't exist because you're happy with who you are, where you are, who you're with, and you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, like Sam and I usually, I mean, you know, we travel and we see lots of things and there's always like parties you aren't invited to that makes you feel weird, you know, and then there's like things you're invited to that you feel awesome. It's kind of like a, you know, high and low during fashion week, every, but everybody goes through that trying to like get into shows, trying to go to parties, trying to, you know, be at the best, whatever it is, you know, shows and after parties and to be seen or to do your thing. So you really go through a lot of different emotions kind of through that week. So I think it's, if you can kind of just stay balanced and say, you know what, I'm just going to have fun and being invited to this fashion show is great. And if I can't, you know, sit front row, I'll stand in the back, but hey, I made it. I made, I made it, it into, into the doors. show. And I think it's, you know, it's not always easy to like get into a fashion show. Like you have to picture yourself as a little kid being like, oh my God, I get to go to this fashion show. You know, you really just have to be like, and I'm happy that you made it into the show, and we've always kind of had that attitude. We've never been like, oh, I have to sit front row and have to do this and that. We've always just kind of like let it happen and, you know, kind of let it be. And I think a lot of the time, maybe what you're talking about too is ego. And I think when that kind of gets in the way, then it's like you're totally affected and it's like you might be sitting front row at a show, but are you actually enjoying it? Because the process of getting to that seat was so awful and like, heart-wrenching and like mm -hmm. just hard and you're not enjoying yourself so it's kind of I think sort of having the mentality I think it's just staying balanced in general you know just kind of being happy with what you've got and kind of going from and there. doing your own thing and doing your own thing seriously like, so doing your own thing yeah can I ask a question sort of follow up on that because um, what you're doing in terms of fashion is new it's kind of hmm. new like you know obviously even when you were here at FIT, people didn't do what you do. And there's been, sometimes there's pushback. You, you're aware of this. I've seen interviews where you talk about this a little bit. Um, but how do you feel about that change that now, um, you know, people who look fabulous and have a good time and look amazing on social media are really kind of forced to be reckoned with? Uh, does, I mean, does that something that you think about or wonder about or, or? Well, I mean, you know what like, I mean? yeah, like sense? in terms of like, you know, magazines and even them not being able to stay around because it's right. so, you know, expensive. And then, then you have bloggers who are actually like, you know, living the dream and dressing, you know, like we've always dressed like this yeah. and we've always had fun with fashion. So the fact that we have like a place to put it on our blog, on Instagram, and then we can go to the shows and report, we're just like really funky editors who just live and breathe it every day. We're not just, you know, we're not and we're, you like, know, we're going on a trip and reporting on the Chanel cruise show through our eyes. So yeah, it's through our vision. So how we, how we experienced it. Yeah, and I think kind of like... Like don't <laughs> swim in the pool in Cuba. But I did. <laughs> she did. I did. Um, but like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like it's basically, it's our vision, you know. Okay. And we get to tell the story on our blog and on our Instagram. So. Yeah, things are definitely changing, 100%. Yeah. And they're always evolving, and I think that if, if people are afraid of it, then it's good. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's good. It keeps everyone <laughs> on their toes, because life is always changing. Life's always True. evolving. Mm -hmm. And the industry is always changing, too. Yeah. Yes. Did we answer your question the way... Did we... Yeah? <laughs> so nice to meet you. Yay. More Thanks. questions? Uh, the, there are people here in the front row. Oh, someone over Hi, I'm Hi. Cammie Hi. Simmons, and I was a little bit interested. I know you guys briefly mentioned how you were ambassadors for all these different companies, but was there a specific time that you noticed on your social media platforms when brands either reached out to you or when you felt the need to reach out to them, and how do you continue to engage and um, 
build business with either the same brands or even new brands? We always feel like we're continuously always reaching out to brands. Mm -hmm. It's like, because PR company, PR people are always changing. There's like a, yes. for some reason, it seems like every two years, companies or brands have another It's like you can PR. establish a really great relationship with a brand, and then their PR leaves, and all of a sudden your, your you know, relationship there isn't there anymore. And it's like, or someone new comes in, and they're like, oh, we want to go in a different direction. You know, so it's either, you know, it's, you, you have to keep building the connection there with all the new people usually, or even, you know, a lot of the time, I mean, with new designers, we reach out all the time. Like we, new see, we reach out personally. We reach out, like we see clothes on Instagram and we lose our mind and we're like, who's designing this, you know? Like, what up and coming designer is this? this how is can we phenomenal. support them or how, how can, can I just wear it? Or so how can cool. we help, you know, kind of, yeah. Okay, and then also just a quick follow-up. Um, I just started following you guys not too long ago, so I haven't been able Thanks. to Thanks. see your journey from a long ways back. But I was also interested in knowing, are you guys involved in the YouTube community? Or are you looking to be involved in that YouTube space in addition to social media and these other blog-related things that you're doing to continue to bring people um, along with your journey. Mm -hmm. So with YouTube, we never really ended up, like I think when I uploaded that video, I didn't, I may have made a few videos after that, but I never actually continued doing the YouTube thing. And it's so interesting you said that because there's certain things, you know, as like a blogger, you kind of regret. <laughs> and I regret not joining Twitter fast enough. I regret not getting on Snapchat fast enough. I regret like not getting on apps, certain apps fast enough mm -hmm. in order to stay up to date on things. We got like, on Pinterest really fast. <laughs> Pinterest, love I love. Pinterest. <laughs> but I think as like an influencer, you have to jump on these apps because you don't know what's going to take off, mm -hmm. you know? And so YouTube, we didn't jump on it the way we should have, even though we had a following at like years ago, eight years ago. And I we might we actually it. relaunch we like with, it. we started doing beauty, uh, Beckerman Beauty right. this okay. year and we love making beauty videos. Like I just like live for it now. <laughs> so um, we might start putting them on YouTube because you know, longer versions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for sure. Definitely a great idea. But that's another thing I recommend. Like when all these apps come out, just jump on them no matter what. Like experiment. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Hi. Oh. Hi. Hello, I'm Hi. Veronica Apson. I'm a fashion design student in sportswear in my senior year. Yay. Yay! Yeah, and I also have a fashion TV blog that um, I not started not too long ago. And I'm so inspired by you guys because I see much like resemblances. And um, I'm having trouble balancing um, doing my fashion designs also being in front of the camera and interviewing people and as well as editing my own videos. The turnaround time and then posting it on my social media and um, I was wondering like when was the moment for you where you, you guys, w was it money that you could like hire a team? Um, when was the moment for you that you could leverage uh, your work and like make it all streamlined? So Sam and I, that's a great question, Sam and I, um, we still don't have a team. Um, we are still doing it all by ourselves. And the interesting thing is the reason, I mean, we have our dad as a photographer. <laughs> He's so great. It's so true. Um, dad, get out of and your boyfriend pants. now. Oh yeah, my, and my boyfriend's really great at taking photos. <laughs> but um, the interesting thing is that it's really great having that inner circle of people you work with, because it feels like we have creative control. I, with other photographers, they own the photos. And I, I like owning things. like you know, photos and whatever. Just in the long and run. In the long run. And so it's kind of really great if you try to just keep it in your family or with your boyfriend or whoever so that they, or sisters or whoever is doing your stuff so that you own that content. But um, that's the reason really why we, you know, haven't so this really full done that. time, you guys have been just so we are full time doing so, it yourselves editing. Yeah, so we do a lot of video editing when we're watching lousy TV to or, in the the car. <laughs> or in the car. Or in the car, we kind of can do it on the go. You almost have to train yourself to in this mindset to when you're doing videos, just to do it really fast. Don't make it take days. Just do it really fast. Yeah, as a creative, you kind of get lost in the video production. Yeah, and yes. video is so hard because you can be like, oh my god, this is such like a cute as moment. As you're watching it for the first time, you should be editing it. As yeah, you're like, it. and try not to like say to yourself before you video, like, I'm not going to be weird. This is going to be normal, and then just do it. 
Okay. Even when we take yeah. pictures now, we actually have a different mentality of taking photos. We don't take hundred photos of the same no. thing anymore because we realize that it, we're missing the moments. Like you would be at music festivals and it, it's like this now with other bloggers and they're taking photos the whole entire music festival. Like they don't stop. Like from Which is great. Which that, is great. That's that works for some people, but but at the same not, time you're missing the event. They're not there. They're you know, you're there. taking photos of things but you're missing the entire you know, like concert, they'll, like they'll get a great shot and then they'll, they're like, oh, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. It needs to be better. Right. So well, it's almost like having that vision being like, you know what? I'm going to take the photo over here. This is going to be great. And you're confident and it's about the it. confidence that, you know what? This is my photo. Not freaking out that you should do it over here, or do it over here. And then, then having all this footage that never ends up getting seen. And I think you end up saving a lot of your time that way. We've yes, just been and noticing worry. and worry. We've been trying to take a lot less photos and try to take a lot less video and kind of be more in the moment of things. And being more confident that it's great content. Otherwise, you're always on your phone and you're actually missing like the whole picture. And we say it's gross. It's a gross, like you can take gross. too many photos where it's like gross You're amount grossed of photos. Out. You're grossed at yourself. Yeah, it's like disgusting. I was like, that was disgusting. We took too many photos. <laughs> so we try not to do that anymore. <laughs> try to like live in the moment a little bit. I really yeah. want to hear from, yeah, from sure. this person with the gold shirt yeah, with the eye. Could shirt. you stand up and show everybody the shirt first and it's then amazing. you can answer the oh, question. Yeah. So that's amazing. It's beautiful. Show the, just do a quick one, you know, 360. <laughs> Because that's a pretty I love awesome. it. Awesome. So, thank you. Very much in the spirit of the evening. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Amanda. And uh, I, you guys were international students here. So, like, I know it's from Canada and you guys spoke English since you are born. But, like, I'm from Brazil and I would like to know, like, how did you manage, like, because you still had to uh, go to the process to get a visa and everything. How yep. did you manage? Like we had to take slimnastics. Yeah, we okay. had to take American history here. Uh -huh. we had yeah, to do our math classes. was different, we so had we had to, take, to do you different had to take math. Slimnastics. Slimnastics. What's that? Do they still what? have that here? It's what like is it? Half gymnastics, half aerobics. <laughs> slimnastics. That was for your visa. <laughs> It was a course here. I don't know. I took it. We ended up taking a lot of. I took like qi gong. I took a lot. We took a lot of very cool glass classes. That is, I want a lot of liberals. We I had to actually take the math class because we did the measurement test and we got all the measurements wrong because we didn't oh. know any measurements. No, we because we were in a different metric system. Oh, but you're we in the metric summer, system, we're, yeah, which we're in, makes way more sense. So we sense had to take summer school. We had to take math all over again because we did the. Anyways, that's another story. But we did it. <laughs> yeah, we did it. I think but we were always in the international office making we, sure that they had all of our paperwork and nothing was on hold. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they put things on hold if you owed the bursar, yeah. like, $3. <laughs> I do remember that. But we are getting into the nitty-gritty of but FIT. I, mean, I actually, I don't even know if FIT's phone number is the same. It was like 212-217-7999. Is that the same yeah. number? I called FIT so this many times. We like harassed them in, in, like, in admissions just to make sure all my paperwork was in because we were international students and they always got it. So yeah. yeah. You just have to kinda, do that. If you, you want to do that. Summa cum laude, you have to do that. <laughs> yeah, That's just keep, most keep calling. Keep calling. Keep calling. And I got tutors for some things that I didn't quite understand. Yeah, like some things that were harder. I remember there was free tutors and we used to just take, take them up tutors. on it. I had tutors and some things, yeah. And did you guys have like any trouble like to like expose yourself like outside because you were internationals or mm. we're Canadians, so no. sort of just like kind of kind of get away with everything. I remember we were <laughs> interning for like everybody. We were calling everybody up, being like, like "Can I please intern?" Mark by Mark Jacobs, we called them up and we were like, "Hi." I don't know if you guys need any help in your office, but we'd love to intern for you for free. We'll do anything you want, including get coffee or whatever you need. We're there. And they're like, uh, okay. Do you want to come in? So we actually worked for Mark for Mark Jacobs, their first collection that they did. Mm -hmm. That was like 2000 yeah. something. Two. Two. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So we were like yeah. their interns for a while. First interns. Yeah. Yeah. So we we're always just calling people up and asking to do stuff. That is real real in initiative, I have to say. Although, yeah. 
Mark is a Parsons graduate, so we have to Sorry. steer away from Sorry. him. No, Sorry. no, that's. that's, true. that's, that's <laughs> but no, but we always even had like the gusto to like go, like for example, our thesis collection yeah. that we did. I really wanted a sweater, and I really like I knew how to use all the machines, but when I had to knit a sweater, I I didn't really know how to do the neckline, and no one, and so I took an um, an after school. What's that called? The the after studies, school. the extracurricular. Signed up for that and learned how to knit a sweater with like you know everybody. So it was very cool. Yeah. So I just so say, whatever you don't know, just you, ask, you can really you learn at tutors. FIT, and there's like they have classes for everything. Or ask your teachers; awesome. they're really here to support you and great mm -hmm. people. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Let's do one or two more questions and then break up. And if people want to, you can stand in front of the snack bowl and. Share some crew to take. The snack bowl? The, Are we snack, taking selfies in front of the snack bowl? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Like, I think there's like crew to take back there. <laughs> Someone tell me, is there like. Cut, yeah, it looks crew good. It looks really See? good. A crew to take. Is, thank you, Aperitif. Alana. <laughs> so I think there's a. Oh, she has a question. Then I think there's at least one or maybe two questions down here, and then we'll. And then we can stand by the. Snacks. Snacks. So I'm Carly. Um, I have one, I guess it's sort of simple. So initially, from the ground up, what did you stubbornly tell yourself was the most important and what ended up actually being the most important? So we always have this motto that this is fun. This is just for fun. Even when we started our blog, we said this is just for fun because I think we were working at a baby store at, it, at the time. Like we were doing a part-time job when we first started our blog because we couldn't support ourselves, so we had to work. And so we always just said, this is just for fun. And that's always kind of been our motto, even when like we're in weird situations, uncomfortable situations, oh. and I look at Sam, I'm like, this is just for fun. <laughs> like fashion is fun. This shouldn't yeah, be like, we shouldn't cry over things, we shouldn't like, yeah. you know, and I think just kind of keeping that light attitude towards things, it makes a lot of things easier. Yeah, it's great, thank you. And when in doubt, go funky. Yeah. <laughs> And then I think there's one down here. Hi. Hi there. Hi. My Hi. name is Krista, and I was wondering, is there a specific process or inspiration that you guys have whenever you're picking out and choosing the different pieces for your outfits? Ooh, that's a good one. It's kind of weird, because sometimes I look at Kaylee, and she looks at me, and we're wearing the exact same thing. So we sort of, certain outfits, sometimes certain outfits just work, and they just mm -hmm. look good together just by, by fluke. Or sometimes, you know, I'll have like a little pink and she'll wear like pink shoes and then it works. Yeah, like sometimes for Fashion Week, if our outfits are totally different themes, we'll try to tie it in with a handbag, a pink handbag, if I'm wearing a pink thing or whatever. Or if we're doing a theme, I'll be like, what's like, what's the, fe like, what do we want to sort mm -hmm. of do here? Or if it really doesn't go, like our outfits, we'll do our hair the same. <laughs> then it just confuses people. They're like, uh. Are you twins? Are you twins? Are you twins? <laughs> like our hair is the same, but nothing else is. Yeah. Like, kind of. Yeah. Um, hi. Hi, I'm Lori. Hi. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, Katie. Thanks. Yay. Um, Yay. My question was um, I know this is like a super huge passion project and everything's super fun, but how do you like organize? the business end of it, like how do you decide who do you want to partner with? I know you reach out to people, but when people reach out to you, do you have like a list of criteria or something that you really want to follow to stick to like who you are? Yeah, so, um, so we have managers and we have been with them for like eight years and basically, you know, we have our email out there on the internet and so we get like a lot of emails a day and we kind of just filter through them and then if there's an opportunity that we're excited about we'll send it to them to kind of go through the details and like what exactly it? it is yeah you know what are they looking at what are they looking for what do they want from us is, is it a good fit most of the time Kaylee and I know who we want to work with mm -hmm. um, just to follow this interesting question what's a, a, you don't have to name the name, but is there an example of a project that you saw that you were kind of like, hmm, what was it? Um, we have a lot of those. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a lot of those kind of emails. Like, you're what? like, um, you don't have well, to name you know, the brand. For example, okay. a few years ago, um, um, like a beauty company reached out and they wanted us to dye our hair another color. And we were like, you know, the timing's not really right. It wasn't really worth it. It didn't really make sense at the time. And then this past year, um, L'Oreal reached out and they're like, do you want to dye your hair metallic pink? 
And I was like, yes, please. And Kelly's like, hell yeah. I think I just broke up with my boyfriend. I was like, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> That's pink. like my little pony. Yeah. Yes. You know, and pink yes. is a whole other thing. Pink. I'll always dye my hair pink. Yeah. So I think a lot of it really depends on timing and like who mm. it is and what it is. And like we dye our own hair anyways. Every month we dye our own hair blonde. So the fit was really right for us. Like, mm. yeah, let's, let's see you go pink and let's <laughs> see how you do it. Like that... I think the video got over 100,000 views or something on that. Mm -hmm. And then, all, like, like we had a lot of followers who were actually dyeing their hair pink and sending it to us, which was so cool. Even our best friend, Emily, died, who's e here, Emily, dyed her hair pink. Here. She's amazing. <laughs> she dyed her hair pink, too, because it was, like, the perfect pink. I dyed it for her. It, it was, was, like, really you fun. couldn't get better than this pink. So we are all kind of, like, gung-ho in this pink. metallic pink. That's, like, you unheard of. You can't improve of. on yeah. that. It's coppery pink. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, in... It's L'Oreal, come on. Yeah, like when yeah. it's right, it's right. It was the yeah. right, perfect shade of pink. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we should stop and like if people want to come up and ask questions maybe personally or if they want to do a yeah, selfie sure. with you. Or yeah, wanna... yeah, that's, that works great. Do whatever. That's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you so much. <laughs>